Welcome back to the class, everyone. Today, we are up against Bauer in the first round of 3v3 for this season. This is the first set with the super, like, Lord Vader Datacron. So this should be a very interesting run, as I'm really not sure how to tackle it. But before we do get into that, let's go ahead and take a look at our opponent's roster. Things are pretty even across the board, all things considered. He has 100 more Relic levels than us, which is nice for him. But we actually, we have Malgus, and he does not, which I think pretty much offsets those Relic levels, even though he does have the same amount of Omicrons we do. We have Malgus to back us up and he does not. And finally, 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 I have all Galactic Legends. I know Profanity and Jab are coming. Everybody's reminded me very kindly, but right now for the first time ever, I have all Galactic Legends that currently exist. So that's pretty cool. We don't have a result, but I don't think that's gonna be, I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice thing to have, but it's not gonna be as big as not having Ray entirely. Mods were pretty close. I haven't beaten like the plus 20s and plus 25s, but our plus 15s, are pretty similar as you can see here uh, so that being said let's go ahead and look at what he's done for us on defense i don't believe he's attacked yet and he set up we both set what i believe is pretty much a medium defense so we've got star killer oh, by the way i hate this dead space this is annoying we have star killer to deal with we have a pretty weak Iden slkr cls which is pretty normal and then as well as ray and no super data crown ray thank goodness i'm glad that's that's done with her now uh, speaking of super data crons, we do have to deal with Maul, or sorry, rather, Lord Vader with Maul. That being said, he doesn't have a late level 9. He does have the good level 6 data crons, so that's going to be a little annoying. But he doesn't have the level 9, so I think we might have a shot at taking that down. I think we have a pretty good shot at the full clear everything with everything said and done. My top wall, just to explain my strategy here, is basically just to make sure if he were to set all 6 Galactic Legends on the front wall, Ray at least stops him from taking the top she's very hard to counter with an off meta counter for 3v3 at least as well as my bottom is really where i want things to sting so i've got my c datacron here i've got lord vader or not lord vader i've got star killer with a pretty good datacron it's the one where they pretty much double emperor palpatine lead which is nice and then we've got our own malice with his level nine and our lord vader with his level nine so should be a challenging wall but i think we'll be able to get through back here is junk and i still haven't changed my fleet defense at all i'm probably gonna have to do that relatively soon if and when we do get profundity so that being said let's go ahead and get to that hlacken and here we go with the battle so we're gonna start things off trying to off meta a few things he did put down a good amount of galactic legends and i'm not sure exactly if lord vader is going to be beatable with one or two or just not at all teams uh, but that being said we're going to start off with giant revan giant luke versus the rest KR. armor does make this possible without her you really can't do it we were pretty much immediately able to get three stacks of best cards to giant luke i think if you have a high relic giant revan he's actually preferred because then you don't end up losing a lot of your mastery on giant luke and you pretty much just can't lose but with him being r3 we're not really able to do that so we're able to get through hux very easily by marking him we then kill first order stormtrooper and luckily the first time that esokara swipes he does not go after giant luke to increases or decreases mastery so i'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure things out here because i want i'm okay with esokara using his basic what i don't want is for him to or i want to have the blind up for when he has his next swipe so we should have we, we really misplayed that we kept him from using his basic and instead um he was able to land the first swipe on us which was not good because now he's going to start to decrease our mastery and because he resists the second blind we've now lost mastery twice which pretty much means we're dead in the water we, we're not going to be able to hit him uh, we might be able to time the match out to the point where he can't really do anything but as you can see we're we're, we're missing like five or six turns in a row we're we're done here so what i'm going to try to do is i'm just going to try to leave his cooldowns in a way so that he has to basic next uh so that's pretty much exactly what happens here he's used both the specials oh at least I, I thought i was gonna do it apparently i dragged this out and let him get it. all his health and protection back which is not ideal um uh, yeah so there it does come a point though here where he uses both of his specials and we leave him at pretty much zero percent turn here so whatever comes in next can clean him up pretty easily like, i'm guessing it's not yet uh yeah so now he's got both of his main two he uses the the poke uses that and then we just leave it here we'll, we'll come we'll, we'll come and clean them up later with something else i know that i still have cam available so maybe we can use that so now we have to go ahead and beat their cls team they do have the, they have a really good datacron it's got the right level of six where where i believe they get repost and i believe it also no sorry it has the damage immunity which is what we just pulled off and it also has cls attacking out of turn 
Um, this starts off really well. We rip all the buffs off. We're able to control everyone. Unfortunately, we had two opportunities to get an expose on CLS there. We didn't get either of them, so he's not dead. R realistically, we needed at least one expose to land, so that CLS would be dead before he gets a turn, and then, you know, we can, we can handle the other two. Um, so we don't get it, and that's really not good, and this ability right here isn't going to kill him. So we just opt for a basic, hope we, you know, we get enough damage, because if we don't, they're all going to cleanse themselves, and I'm going to need that, the special later. So unfortunately, that happens, and we pretty much just wasted the entire team. We no longer have that, but I'm like, all right, so we're not going to use this team anywhere else. Let's try Gear 11. Gear 11 Aiden versus a Relic 7 CLS team with a level 9 Datacron that was meant for him along with his, his level 6 and whatnot. And this, I wasn't really expecting this to work to come in, but I figured it, it might, you know, like the synergy here is pretty good. They, they, they attack it. The enemy team attacks at a turn a ton. And we have a lot of synergy against rebels. They can't resist a lot of what we do. So I'm like, all right, let's just let's just find out, see if this works. And as you can see, even with their Datacron and us being, you know, Gear 12 versus R7, it kind of doesn't matter. Which is, I, I need, I think I need to make a video alone on just how broken Iden is because th this is dumb. Like for a team to, like I know there's such a thing as synergy and like certain things beat other things even without being the right gear levels but this is really ridiculous for the cls team to have a level 9 datacron i think i've said that four times now and for us to just come in and beat it with a team that's not even geared it's, it's kind of dumb speaking of doing dumb things we're gonna know, now go ahead and take our fennec and bam the duo and i don't i wasn't doing the duo here to be impressive or for banners i had to do it because i didn't have another good third option that was relic five like my grief i would have loved to do grief but unfortunately it wasn't there so you can see we do have the um we do have the bam datacron where he gets to refresh his cooldowns every single turn it is very very helpful here we were able to get rid of maul immediately they also do have the level six with lord vader where he's able to use or he's able to decrease his cooldowns every turn too so he's going and he's getting to use the aoe every single turn so we, we both have pretty equal datacrons here we're applying the damage immunity every single time we get which is working heavily in our favor, as you guys can see. Lord Vader's AI seems to be kind of random. He doesn't really pick one target. He kind of bounces back before the two, regardless of things. And then on top of that, we, we did have to put Armor Shred and Rail Guard to be able to kill him. So that slowed us down a little. But as you can see here, we're, Fennec does a decent amount of damage. And part of this is because Fennec gets bonuses for every other character. Or rather, for she gets bonuses and they're taken away if there's other characters. So she has a, quite a bit of extra offense against Lord Vader. Even with him keep stacking his mastery and getting ult and, you know, getting three turns to R1 or whatever that was. Um, Fennec's still just gonna, just gonna kick him into next week, which is exactly what happened. So, level six data, or yeah, the really good level six data crown Lord Vader. And Fennec still beats it. Well, rather, Bam beats it, or I guess they both do. So now we're gonna take, and I guess this is becoming, I was told in chat when we were, when we were doing this match. This is our signature counter, I guess. Our Lord Vader Mon Mothma versus Rey. This is a very well modded Ray. She has an offense set and all three offense primaries at R8. So the ult does a ton of damage, even versus my full health SLKR. We did put like a 60% uh, health steal Datacron, so that does help us get back to full health and recover a little bit here. And now we've stacked up enough damage so that we can just kill Finn. Uh, Poe is also pretty close. Really, we just need one turn of ult for when Ray gets her next one, but then we just we just kill her instead. So that would have. That whole battle would have worked even if we didn't have whatchamacallit. Now we've we were actually able to kill most of what our opponent had with without our with our off meta counters. I was a little afraid that maybe something wasn't gonna work against Lord Vader, and I think due to technical difficulties, I think we lost our Wampa versus Star Killer battle, which is another one we did that I was a little skeptical about. That being said, uh, none of those sketchy counters ended up really going bad except for the genetic loop one, so we were able to burn a Galactic Legend. To get rid of SLKR. I wasn't... I, I, I contemplated using Cam or Bastila-led Cam, but I ultimately just didn't think it was going to be wise. So we end up taking... And this is kind of gross. We take in our Gear 12 Treya team versus their Gear 12 Iden team. And I'm thinking, you know, this is... This is fine. Like, Treya is a hard counter to Iden, if you will. And we're at the same gear level, so we should be able to tank the hits. There's no Datacrons involved in here, because, you know, again, Gear 12 teams... And it's, it's going pretty well for the most part. We're able to get death out immediately. We do isolate Aiden just to keep, kind of keep her under wraps. Definitely don't want to kill her just because number one, she'll revive and she'll also lose the isolate, I believe. Or maybe she just dies actually because of it. I'm, I'm so, I hate that they, they made Trey as a thing so nuanced. Oh, 
and then yeah gear 12 no buffs just one shots my trey on a basic that was really annoying that you can't see it now but the face that i'm making um on in the actual matches like okay just gotta we won but we kind of got the middle finger at the end of it so now and this is this is i don't i don't really like this we have a galactic legend left over we got to the back wall and they don't have another galactic legend there so i get to use jmk to burn a non-galactic legend team which in my opinion means i didn't set a strong enough enough defense um because if i if i have one left over and granted you know i was i wasn't sure of some of my counters so there wasn't a guarantee but still this is this isn't ideal i would rather i would rather jmk hold on the four on defense than you know solo something on offense but we do we do use him there we're trying to get through the rest of his teams he did there were no more galactic legends on the back wall but he did have a lot of like really good stuff and if i don't budget my teams correctly here we're just not gonna full clear so we go ahead and take in this team we don't have genet revan obviously because we already used them uh, just trying to chew through b1 as quickly as possible that way grievous has less opportunities to be healed when we eventually need to go after him i didn't have jolie i don't really always have jolie here so that was pretty nice if something does go wrong like grandma Yoda, even at r8 he's still really squishy like I, I do i do not enjoy that he is that squishy also don't make this mistake and we didn't this time i thought about like decreasing the health on grievous if you do that you also probably bring him into his health and then he's gonna make magna marked and you can't get around to b1 so we learned I learned a lesson on that one a while ago. We do get the stun on Grievous, which is actually really nice. And then we're, we're going to have to go ahead and take out their Magna here, which isn't... That's not that hard. And we have enough uh, health and protection to be able to tank his big hit. And now it's... I mean, this is going to be really easy. Even if he does somehow manage to kill someone, Jolie's just going to be able to bring him back immediately. So, uh, team works out perfectly. We're able to take down Grievous and call that match a day. So now we have, as you guys can saw before, we took out Pat, or we took out the uh, the JMK to solo a team. But now we have an opportunity to actually use Pad Cat, and this is a this is another level nine Datacron Bam. So I'm a little worried here. Like I don't know, I don't know exactly what I want to do. So we end up taking in our Padme versus Bam. Works perfectly. We don't have to worry about him doing the endless damage immunity. Also, the AI isn't smart enough to do that. They'll always use his other ability, and then we take him out. So that one. That part of the match went really stinking well. And now we have to use... Oh, this is... Yeah, this is a pain. So he has a dash team. He doesn't have the level 9 dash data crom, but he has the Omicron. And this, I mean, you guys can see here, my R2 just went from being full health protection to almost being one shot. So this is really, really not good. Yeah, this counter, unfortunately, just doesn't work. I, I think I, I budgeted my teams poorly. I, I should have used something else somewhere else because this... This dash team, you know, spoiler for the rest of the stream, ends up, ends up becoming a very big problem. And there's probably something else I could have used. Like, maybe, I don't know if the Bastlet team would have worked with there. I think, I'm trying to remember what other team I had in mind. I think I could have mixed up my teams in a way so that this could have been easily beaten. But as you guys can see, um, yeah, they're going to they're gonna take out JTR pretty easily. And then we even come in, I think, immediately with Troopers. I think there was another counter in there that got lost. Like, I had some technical difficulties during the stream. We're trying to switch some things up. But we were able to immediately bring in Troopers, get rid of Andor, and then that's that's all she wrote. There's nothing they can do now. Uh, L3 is not going to be able to tank all the hits here. So we're able to get through them pretty easily. But I think one of the other issues was they were really fast, and I don't think it was going to be able to chain things around. So we're going to go ahead and throw in a Burda versus their Qui-Gon Jinn team. They did have the turn meter... Uh, datacron so i was a little worried that qui-gon jim would just one shot my my empire sith team here um and they actually they were still did a ton of damage and i wanted to use gideon as well but if i used gideon then i couldn't use whatever datacron that i have on here also they would have gone first anyway so i really needed the pre taunt more than anything and i thought thrawn would be more useful than gideon i was also very confused as to what to do here because i could use the baoe clear some foresight but then i don't get back to it for a while I can Merciless Massacre and basic and ability block everyone. And then General Anakin probably just one shots me because I don't I'm not taunting anymore. So this is I'm not sure if there was a right way to play this, but as you can see, it, it very, very quickly goes very poorly. So try to ability block everyone. Um and I was really just hoping Qui-Gon didn't die. So at least I mean at least that team's manageable. I don't know if we end up ever eventually coming around back to it, but we do take in Tuscans versus Bad Batch. For the same exact idea as the last one, we're, we're trying to use a burner. They also had a turn meter datacron. I really, really hated that set. And these guys are really annoying because they're able to pretty much loop. Uh, they're more or less able to loop their cooldowns. So even if I drain them and I come back with something else, 
this ends up happening. I, I wanted to get a clear shot on Echo so we could just one-shot him. Um, but we don't. We get a clear shot on Hunter, which is okay. He's the leader. Like, that's that's definitely useful. But at the same time, once and once we start to lose, this is actually, I think, what's a bigger problem with this team. We don't have a ton of ways to get back advantage. Huxley doesn't. Like, we really, honestly, really could use crew here. But, you, yeah, because right there, we would have been able to strip off the buffs, including the defense down, as well as the translation. But instead, they just, they just keep getting things back. And again, without a, a constant source of advantage, our Type Fighter Pilots Omicron is technically nerfed. Like, we don't... It gives 100 speed. 100 speed doesn't do much if our character does... Or 100 speed isn't applied if we don't have advantage. So, they have taken everything down. This one, that was really annoying. Like, if we just had a clear shot Echo in the very beginning, that would have been a very easy win. So, this one, this one was kind of funky. We have to... We have to use Geo's Watt versus the Moff Gideon Imperial Remnant team. And I'm really... I'll say one thing. I've, I've been fairly disappointed with the Moff Gideon team. Like, this is both an offense and defense. I have not seen it do anything impressive. Like, Gideon... These, all three of those characters are great. Sure, Gideon, Dark. But the Imperial Remnant squad itself does... Even in threes where it can be, you know, be completed, it doesn't seem that great. Um, so, Dark does one-shot our Brute there, and that's a little annoying. But we're... There, he doesn't... He's not able to do a consistent amount of damage because he keeps... He keeps going to his specials, and dark specials really are not that great. Um, we go ahead. We don't. We weren't in stealth. So we weren't able to dispel the um, the critter immunity. And I think I, I think I misplayed this in the very beginning. We should have been going right for dark uh, for the very beginning because if we can get his stacks down, then we we can deal with the revives later. But if he still has four stacks, he's probably just going to one shot all of our characters, which is what he ends up doing to to our what call it to our brood over there. Luckily, we we can bring him back, and that's. That's manageable. Uh, yeah, we just used the big hit there while he had, even with crit, it, we, we were since we weren't able to crit, we weren't able to, or we weren't in stealth, we weren't able to remove it. So we're, things are still going okay. Um, we're able to finally get the tank tech over there in the brute. Uh, we get one of the revives out of the way, and now my, my focus here really is to just to get rid of dark and get hopefully you know get multiple stacks down at a time. That way he's not able to rebuild them with his zeta. Uh, so we do get two stacks down. So even if he Tries to come back, he'll he'll only get back up to two for the time being. And his damage just drops significantly. Uh, he was able to one-shot a brute before. Now he's barely breaking protection. Now he's down, and that's, I mean, that's a win. It's kind of a long, drawn-out battle. I think I could have I could have played it better in the very beginning by going right after. By going right after their dark. Instead, I tried to, tried to like, kind of budget my damage to also hit Gideon. And that, that wasn't very smart of me. But and I, I don't even like this counter that much. Our... Or which we'll call it a spy can't crit a lot because of just the way the synergy works so it all worked out uh we ended up winning that and we, we were not able to clear anything else on the ground we ended up getting stuck on a bunch of stuff and like i said technical difficulties i'm missing some of those attempts there wasn't anything really super noteworthy just a bunch of teams that you wouldn't you would guess wouldn't work weren't working um so we we go ahead and take in now our malevolence versus empire very standard matchup we do this literally every single time as long as they do not have a TIE Fighter Pilot that dodges, you know, five plus times, really not a lot they can do um, down in 50 seconds. So they have Executor as well. It's a lower star Executor, which is weird, but we're going to go ahead and do our normal thing, throw in our burner immediately, and then after that, we'll go ahead and bring in Rebels. And as long as we don't get, you know, all the dodges, then we'll be fine. So this ends up working out pretty well. We don't, we don't end it as much as I would like to, so we have to actually let that time out, so. Um, they go right after Falcon, not a big deal, because we did our burner correctly. Now we can go right after Xanadu. And then, uh, this just happens again. Uh, three hits in a row where we have an opportunity to call Falcon. We don't get it. it. It just doesn't seem to go our way. Luckily, we did get him close enough that we were able to use the AoE and take him out. So even if we get to clean this up, this is much more manageable now. So we have a bunch of Breach, so Cassian isn't wise, because we will rip up the taunt just for it to come back. Um, and then we just don't, we keep not getting assists again from Falcon. Uh, six hits in, and we didn't get a single assist. 50%, my butts. Like, it's, it's uh, this, this, this comp is very annoying when he does not assist. That being said, we're going to go ahead and bring in Wedge, because then we get above him, you know, and he does assist, then it stays off. Seven hits, doesn't assist. Eight hits, doesn't assist. Um, finally get a bonus attack there from, from Biggs, and I get another one. So we, we miss, like, eight or so in the beginning but we're, we're getting some in the middle and that actually does allow us to clear a few ships because we we have done this before where we've gotten absolutely zero and then we we can't do anything so i'm gonna go ahead and try to work our way around razor crest unfortunately they got 
they were allowed to have too many allies alive at the same time, so they, they get their, their contract, which is not good for us, and it looks like they're even going to beat us to ult here um, and just one-shot my guy. And now, now we can never get past the taunt, really, unless we have buff immunity, which we don't. And this is kind of where we end up. So this, is, this isn't this is great. Um, it's also not terrible. Though, having killed Slave 1 and Xanadu Blood, it gives a pretty neat opportunity for Radus to come in, maybe kill a ship or two, and then after that we can throw in Thrawn, to annihilate houndstooth so not obviously not the ideal outcome if we would have gotten an assist you know once or twice in the first seven hits that would have made a difference but we didn't and here we are so we have to use our first order versus negotiator as we love to do and it i mean it goes about as well as it always does rng is kind of out there we we are able to nail the hits perfectly on Jedi anakin we're able to stun ahsoka we have to throw our turn a little weird here we're gonna go ahead and decrease turn meter on special forces and this doesn't happen the way I would want it to. My my shuttle should have gone first. So that way I wouldn't rip things off. Immediately triggered it on Anakin. So instead of bringing an Ebonhawk to rip off the buff, because I, I want to save that for when he's in stealth, we just immediately go ahead and go after Y-Wing. Kind of nice that Sarge came in. I mean, anything but Plo would have been fine. Um, actually, Sarge can actually really mess this up for First Order. But we were able to rip all this protection off, so that was nice. Just go for the target lock on Y-Wing, and luckily they don't land the days on our silencer. They get pretty close. Things are looking grim, but we're able to bring in Ebonhawk. Ebonhawk, double basics, gives us what we need there. Big hit on Sarge. And at this point, like I don't I don't think I'm going to win, so you know, let's just do as much damage as possible. Because we already have to use Radis to clean up the other fleet, so our dregs or something are going to have to clean this up. So we really, really need to make sure as many of them just die as possible. So keep giving turns back to silencer. The more damage he does, the more health steal he'll get. And then eventually, he should just become unbeatable. They do do kind of go after him, but we keep calling him to assist. So again, that he'll do damage and heal. And he ends up surviving long enough to take the whole team down. So props to First Order. I, probably, I need to make a video on that too, about how he's going to... I think a lot of people are going to transition to Profundity against Executor. And then it's going to be... Um, it's going to end up being... Nego or First Order's play still beat Negotiator in a, in a lot of senses. Because I think that's his best trade. And then you can, you know, put Empire or whatever on defense and use the level and scout of Profundity if you like. So now, we have to bring in our Radis against the... the and I feel like for the first time, I really I somewhat understand how the slate functions. I don't, I don't think I played it perfectly. But we, for the most part, we're able to time our big hits. So we take out IG. And I, taking out IG was really important. Because with only two... Thrawn beats them to the ultimate. If, 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 even if we everything goes to crap right now, we will be able to come in with Thrawn and just annihilate both of these two characters, or two ships, rather. So this is fine. We're able to use our... We're able to bring in the correct reinforcement. This is kind of a bummer, too, because even, even if we kill Razor Crest and our Radis there, you know, collides into the enemy capital ship, I'm pretty sure my team does not have the damage required to take out hounds do so that's kind of a bummer uh we do just keep going though like i said trying to get to our ult before they do charger for the big hit maybe we can sneak something in on their on their razor crest over there we bring in sarge just as extra protection i, I, I won't lie though the i know the radis flea isn't the best but their, their, their tank is pretty decent for them she she took a beat in the very beginning and she's still going pretty strong so almost almost lose our falcon there we're able to get a little bit of protection back i don't my Radis is still only five stars, so I don't have everything upgraded for her, unfortunately. Uh, the days on Houndstooth made a pretty noticeable difference. We were able to take, almost take out Razor Crest, getting him down there, and then we get our ult, so we don't have to deal, worry about their capital ship. We also lose ours, which I guess isn't that big of a deal. So I put it on auto, just thinking, you know, we're not going to get through Houndstooth, and we're like, oh, that's done. We should at least kill Razor Crest. Uh, go back to auto here, and I'm thinking, can we? There any possible way we can actually get through it and i believe it was bro karen who's in the chat who's co pretty consistently in our twitch uh streams said if you can line up the hits right between i believe it was like the days and then pose big hit and then millennium falcon's big hit you can actually kill houndstooth so that's pretty much what we try to do at some point here i'm not sure where but i mean it's it's kind of it's kind of luck though so we end up again dazed big hit big hit big hit and houndstooth goes down so really cool there and we actually did end up winning the entire match i won't lie i think we could have gone and we could have done some of this better or at least maybe left the heavier defense but there was i mean there were certain things that we just didn't know i, I didn't know the bad batch wasn't going to work here i didn't know the giant luke wasn't going to work here. I, I didn't know the bam was going to work up top 
So we're able to take out three zones and then our opponent honestly really struggled. I think even without our Rayon defense, I don't think that he would have made it through. He failed twice on Lord Vader. Um, he was able to one-shot the other two teams. And I think at a certain point he realized, I don't know where, it was probably when he started failing, right? He realized he probably just wasn't going to be able to even get through two zones. And I think he just kind of gave up. So he failed as well on our mall team, which was kind of cool. I'm thinking this might be the last team this mall team ever gets to play. I think I'm just going to throw that into Lord Vader. I think my, my roster has reached a point where I don't need two teams. I think I can make one team. A dash held once, despite being level six. And then Ray pretty much held, even though she doesn't have her ultimate. So... Overall, very good match for us. I would like, I feel like it was very sloppy. I think my performance can be a little bit better, but honestly, I was very, also very just excited for this match. So, everything's said and done. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay awesome.